Hello, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, can I start uh, sharing uh, my slides? I'm sorry, hold on a second. Um, can you guys uh, see my screen right now? I take that as a yes. All right. So today I'm going to talk about my journey a little bit and then about my uh, studies and my ambition on microalgae to make um, a low impact um, food uh, sources, uh, one of the food sources in the future. Well, uh, a little bit about myself. I believe a lot of you folks that don't know who I am. Uh, I was uh, born and grew up in Taiwan, by the way. My family in Taiwan, we have been four generation Buddhism and been making vegetarian food for about three generations already. So when I found out my daughter, Sophie, um, she has this allergic reaction to the seafood, especially the shellfish. You know, that gave me an idea um, using my family's technologies to start it, another company called Sophie's Kitchen back in 2010 in Sebastopol, California. Now you have to understand, you know, 2010, this is like way before Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods got big and famous. So I started the company really because of my passion uh, with the plant-based food. You can pretty much say, you know, uh, the um, uh, Jasmine just mentioned that I, I, I got an MBA degree from Columbia. Originally, I was thinking of becoming an investment banker, but less than uh, six months, I just can't withstand the lifestyle. Still found my passion in food, so came back to Taiwan, joined my family business. So, you know, you can say that I pretty much spent my whole career making plant meat. So that's why when I found out my daughter saw this allergic reaction to the shellfish, I was looking at the whole plant-based foods even back before 2010, the landscape. Uh, seafood is a so important and so missing part in the whole plant-based uh, landscape. So we're literally the world's first uh, seafood-themed, 100% seafood-themed plant-based food company. I sold the companies already, but along the almost 10 years of managing that business, I kept hearing the questions from my consumer. So people come to the seafood because of its healthiness. So if you want to sell them something to replace it, you got to be damn sure that something is even healthier than the original seafood. That's how I ended up working on this food grade protein from microalgae. Well, the thinking behind that is that, hey, all the fishes and shrimp, they got their nutrients by eating microalgae, right? Why can we not use microalgae to make our food? That's why I learned about this cutter issue, this, this flavor issue, this pricing issue. And turns out fermentation solves us all. We're the, one of the very uh, few and very first uh, uh, group of startups using fermentation to grow microalgae for alternative protein. So this is basically our technology. We select a few strains of microalgae that can grow in dark in fermentation style and be sturdy enough to be fed with all kinds of industrial food waste. And more importantly, we're not gonna just sell you the biomass. We actually went through the protein isolation process. And the finished product is just like the one you saw on the lower right-hand corner. It's a wonderful color, wonderful flavor, protein flour in the future can be priced competitively. And all these color, flavor, and pricing issue are all done thanks to fermentation. Now, another angle uh, that is very special in our technology is that we use industrial food waste to feed our microalgae. Well, we did this because uh, we started this microalgae project in Singapore. I don't know how much you folks know about Singapore. In Singapore, we have to recycle 90% of the water. So the next thing we thought of is, hey guys, what happened if the glucose, the feedstock we used to feed our microalgae, what if that was gone or that was not available? And that's how we came up with this idea. Initially, we were thinking of using the Spain grain from Heineken and Tiger Beer Brewery, not far from us. Well, it turns out that's not Muslim people okay. It's not can be halal. So we turned our attention to Nestle's Milo Spain grain. Nestle has this, this uh, big factory in Singapore. According to Nestle people, they throw away close to 20 tons to, this, to the landfill. Going forward, that could be free to us. We just have to pay for shipping, standardization cost. Comes out to be only 48 US cents per kilo. Now you compare that to close to the glucose we use in the lab, two to four dollars per kilo. You see what I'm talking about right here. And this is some of the product valid validation that we have done with our protein concentrate that we isolate from our protein flour. We successfully made it into a plum milk, a black cheese, and even cheese bread. 
And these photos are very fresh, less than two months old from Singapore. We used the protein concentrate, go, went to uh, Bula Givaudan uh, Protein Innovation Center using high moisture extrusion uh, to develop into a chunk meat. And turns out my engineer saw this uh, texture looks pretty like chicken. So we made it into a plant-based nugget, the photo in the middle. So this technology, the goal behind it is really to address an issue that's fundamentally, just like Shannon mentioned, is the plant-based protein that we're promoting to the world really the silver bullet that we're looking for? You know, we know people get wealthier, they want to eat more protein, they want to eat more meat. That's why we're promoting a plant-based protein. But then again, looking at the plant-based protein, there's so many issues around it. So that's why we think the technology we develop or, or Shannon develop will be a lot better uh, for the future, for the world. Because looking at all the issues we're facing, we're really running out of space the goldy axon, should I say, uh, to grow more industrial agriculture. So what's left on top of feeding and, and, and fitting all the, the coming up population that's going to, to crowd the planet Earth, you have to grow more foods. So keep using industrial agriculture is just not sustainable because we got, we're not going to have enough space that has the right climate with the global warming, especially to grow more foods. So the future of our protein solution needs uh, a technology like, like what we develop or a lot of other similar uh, startup, uh, including Shannon's, um, to address the issues that we face in the future. And what would the future protein uh, landscape become? This is what we envision. Well, we as a team, we do not see the possibility of any pro any animal protein totally uh, uh, going away. It's just not likely because you got some folks who still gonna miss that 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 very uh, delicious and very freshy, uh, very bloody, should I say, kind of animal meat. So that's gonna stay. But because all the reasons uh, that I mentioned, uh, the weather, the, the, a lot of the crowdiness, and and a lot of other issues, it's gonna be very premium. Same goes with the plant-based protein. Then what's left is the cell-based technology and the single cell protein that we develop. So why we think microalgae is a lot superior? Well, let me give you two stories. And these two stories are happening in 2020, is that scientists, two groups of scientists, found out that microalgae, it turns out that they are not only the ancestor, the father or mother of the first plant on this planet. On top of that, they're also, they're even the mother and the father of the first animal on this planet. So pretty much microalgae is the genesis of all the living things on this planet Earth. And that is the reason why we see microalgae as such a nutritious micro you should never ignore or not try to utilize it. And that's why we dedicate ourselves to the study of microalgae and try to make it relevant to the food applications. Well, with that, I conclude my presentation. I hope you enjoy my presentation and I will be very happy to answer any question you may have later on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eugene. There's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, so Brian Mayarella had a question about what the amino acid distribution of microalgae protein, if it matches the profile of human essential amino acids. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the microalgae we selected has the complete essential amino acids needed by human being. Quite frankly, we think seafood is healthy because why? Guess what? They got Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I got, I got a bit. All right. Are you, uh, can you hear me well? I'm sorry. I, I see uh, some interruption here. You can hear me, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So the cell based okay. the cell based seafood technology, believe it or not, it will not have the identical nutrition and identical flavor like the real seafood. Why? Because in that fermentation tank, the cell-based technology still literally is another fermentation technology. In that fermentation tank, because they're so clean, 
they never got in touch with the microalgae. They actually need our microalgae to give it the identical nutrition. So that is the reason why you can see why microalgae is so nutritious. Guys, let me tell you, with microalgae protein that we developed, this will be the first time you have a non-animal-based protein that will have a superior nutritional profile that's even better than a lot of the seafood and definitely a lot better than a lot of the terrestrial uh, animal that were, were farming on the land. And so th that's why we think we really have to bring this protein uh, to the world for people to use it. Thanks, Eugene. And we have I have time for one more question. Um, Armand was wondering <clears throat> about companies like Aqua Cultured Foods and Bosque Foods and how they're using microbial fermentation to produce whole cut seafood alternatives and was wondering if you were also intending to involve filamentous fungi in the future. Yeah, you know, that's a that's another great question. So uh, about the fungi and the yeast and bacteria, there are so many companies out there, including startups. And so a lot of multinational companies are focusing their attention on these uh, microorganisms. And think about it. How many big, 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 truly multinational companies are really studying, researching, and even working on microalgae? There's none. There's none. It all... The, the, all the microalgae companies in the world to date, I can tell you, are mostly small and medium-sized companies. Some of these were acquired by the multinationals. Yes, true. But then again, in terms of the studies by the multinational companies or, or the applications done by the multinational companies has been very, very few. So in our future uh, uh, technological roadmap, we do have a uh, uh, seafood alternative still uh, in uh, our future roadmap. And, and that's quite frankly, that's how I started this project as well. But then again, we see a lot more different applications in different areas. So I would say that we're going to focus attention on those wider applications and then turn our attention to the seafood. But uh, in terms of other microorganisms, I guess we will kind of stay away from that for now because there are just so many competition in those areas. And we want to be the microalgae for food uh, 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 kind of experts. And so that's how we want to dedicate ourselves. Thank you so much, Eugene.